All right, I think it's all set. Um, so hello everyone. Um, this is the next session of the Manage 201s and I'll be covering smart card authentication. Um, so smart card authentication uh, is shipping in GitLab 11.6 and I can give a short demo. So um, with 11.6, if you if you enable the smart card authentication, uh, this is how the login screen will look like. That there will be a new tab uh, for smart card saying that login with smart card. And when you hit that button, um, then it will actually log into GitLab. And so now it looks like that we just added a button uh, that lets people log in without authentication. But uh, that, that is actually not the case. So um, I will elaborate with that presentation. Um, so what is a, a smart card? Uh, why, it is, is it, why, why it's smart? Uh, um, so basically smart cards are everywhere. Uh, they are in, the, in your phone as the SIM card and uh, also your credit cards uh, are also smart cards. Um, so they have a, a built-in processor and uh, uh, secure storage. And secure storage is obviously needed if you are going to store uh, certificates on them. And uh, because I mentioned they had a microprocessor, they are programmable. Um, they have an embedded operating system. Uh, the most common ones are .NET based, and, uh, but there are also other ones that are, that are Java based operating systems and, and custom ones. And the, so, as they are programmable, they provide a way uh, for cer certificate storage and to access those certificates and the additional features. So some smart cards, you can have automatic creation, um, which, which really helps. Uh, but that's what we are most interested in. Um, so if you want to test um, the smart card login um, and you are thinking about uh, acquiring a smart card. So as you might already guess, it's mostly a, a, a business to business market. So I actually had a, a, a hard time finding a shop where I can order a smart card, uh, which I finally was able, but then uh, the second problem is that, uh, so most of these smart card solutions, uh, you need uh, uh, to download a proprietary driver uh, which might not be available on the manufacturer. So I, I think we lost you and, and I'm hearing Martin. Um, can you hear me or is there something with my sound? Yeah, we can hear you now. We, we lost you there for oh, a minute. Excellent. You're talking about okay. the uh, client that you need for uh, server credentials. Ah, great. Okay, thanks. So, um, and also if you go and uh, find a, a search for the internet, how to use a smart card, uh, then many uh, websites will, for example, link how to download, uh, for example, certificates for DOD, uh, which might already be outdated and you will not be able to, to download it. So, so um, what worked for me um, is, is a YubiKey uh, because it also supports and has a smart card capabilities. Um, and it was pretty easy for me to set it up and uh, start using. So I, I used for the whole time a YubiKey to to develop and, and uh, test this feature. Um, so the workflow, how, so the question is how we get the, the client certificate from the smart card uh, to GitLab and we can uh, split that workflow into two. So we have the, um, we, we can have the smart card reader to the browser. That's one half of it. And the second half is from the browser uh, to GitLab. 
And uh, we make this distinction because the first part uh, doesn't require anything from, from our side, from GitLab side. It's purely um, the responsibility for the user or the system administrator. It's system administrator of the user to set, set up the, the operating system uh, correctly. Um, so set up the driver and the middleware for the smart card reader and uh, also configure the, the browser. Um, but the second part, uh, from the browser to GitLab, we want to uh, configure the web server and we want to uh, verify uh, the, the client certificate. So as I mentioned, the first part, um, getting the certificate from the reader uh, to the browser. So this is how a, a smart card reader looks. Um, it connects to your laptop or computer via USB um, and you can like put a, the smart card in um, and it will read the, the certificate and um, you also need the middleware which, uh, which needs to be installed uh, on your machine. Uh, the one middleware I use is OpenSC and as you can guess from the name um, it's an open source solution and it supports uh, multiple smart cards. It's basically, um, um, it provides an API um, for a, a bunch of smart cards. Uh, not all of them, because most of them are proprietary, but the most one might be uh, supported by OpenSC, um, as for example, the, the YubiKey. Um, there are multiple APIs, um, but the one we are interested in is actually in, in OpenSC for YubiKey, and you need to uh, configure the browser uh, to work with the middleware. So here's how I configure the Firefox. Um, there's actually in the uh, privacy and security settings, there's the security part, and I highlighted the, the security devices. Actually, both uh, buttons are important for us, use certificates and the security devices. So if you, if you click on the, uh, the security devices, uh, you will need to add the OpenSC as a security device. Um, so here I just brew installed OpenSC and provided the, the path to the pkcs11.so file, uh, which is the API uh, we need. And you can see on my computer that op the, my YubiKey is working uh, via the OpenSC middleware. Um, so you might not be, uh, if you don't have a, uh, a YubiKey, you might still be able to use the smart card authentication in the browser. Uh, I haven't tested it, but if you import a certificate uh, in Firefox, um, it might be available to select it when the client side certificate uh, pops up. So here it's actually not, uh, not an imported certificate, it's the one, the Fire, my Firefox can see uh, on the YubiKey. Oh, by the way, if, if you have any question, just, uh, just uh, ask in the group chat or just stop me and, and, and ask the question. Um, so that was the first part, how we, we need to make sure our operating system uh, and our browser works with our smart card readers. And the second part is uh, getting the uh, the certificate from the browser uh, to GitLab. So, um, the, uh, first we need to configure the, the web server. Uh, since Omnibus is using Nginx, um, I will be mostly talking about it. Um, so this is how you require the, the client side certificate um, in the Nginx config. Uh, you basically just set the, the root certificate and there's SSL verify client, uh, which has three options, on off or optional. Um, we don't, uh, we always hire the, the client side certificate. If you have a, if you set it to optional, uh, the, the little window still pops up for the user uh, to select the certificate or unlock the, the certificate. Uh, but if they want to use a different authentication method, uh, it might be really annoying to like always having that screen. Um, here I just uh, put the configuration, 
how you need to set up the server certificate when you want to use uh, HTTPS versus the client certificate. Um, so the, the top one is how you set up HTTPS for, for, for example.com. And uh, uh, the bottom one is how you uh, use the client, how you request the client certificate from the browser. And since I mentioned that um, uh, Nginx needs to uh, require the client side certificate, uh, it needs to run on a different port. So with, for example, with uh, Apache HTTPS, uh, we can, so it can renegotiate uh, SSL for the server and we can define a different uh, client side certificate rule for different directories. Uh, but Nginx unfortunately doesn't support uh, SSR rene renegotiation. So what we've done in Omnibus is running the same server, pretty much the same server on a different port, but this server requires the client side certificate. And when I hit that button in GitLab to uh, log in with smart card, it actually forwarded me uh, to this second port, uh, required the client side certificate and forwarded it back uh, to the original GitLab port. And you also need to uh, set the header uh, to be forwarded to uh, the GitLab Rails application. And this is how you've done it. The first is the name and SSL client escape cert is the name of the Nginx uh, variable. Um, actually we had a, a regression um, related to this recently uh, because we figured that Omnibus only has Nginx version, I think 1.12, um, but SSL client eSkate cert was introduced in uh, 1.13 or something like that. Um, and previously um, only SSL client certificate existed, uh, which is now deprecated, uh, but it returns the the client certificate in a little bit different format. Uh, so we need to make sure that both are supported uh, in GitLab Rails. Um, so this is just putting the pieces together uh, in the Nginx config. Um, this is still just a short example. I deleted most of the actual configuration. We have the, uh, uh, the server running on a different port. We require uh, the client certificate and uh, we uh, verify against this root certificate and forward it, forward the client certificate uh, as X SSL client certificate to the Rails application. And uh, finally, in GitLab Rails, um, this is how we do the, uh, the verification. So in the GitLab configuration, you can have the smart card CA file uh, which will be loaded to an open SSL certificate store. And basically we just uh, verify against that store the, the certificate header we are receiving from Nginx. So this, this is how the, uh, the pieces fit together. And when you visit uh, gitlabexample.com on the port, uh, which actually requires the, the client side certificate, this is the, the pop-up. Uh, this unlocks the smart card um, and lets you then select which certificate you want to use on this site. So I actually have only one certificate on my Yubiki. Um, so actually the, the pop-up is, is only populated with one item. So previously when I showed the example, uh, you didn't see these two uh, windows because I already used and selected uh, this certificate uh, and I hit the remember this decision. So when I previously uh, used the demonstrated how to login with the smart card, uh, these windows didn't show up. So um, a few words about the certificate itself. So this is a, an example from Wikipedia. Um, there's a few important details uh, we are interested in. Uh, in the certificate. So for example, it, it has a serial number. Uh, this is usually, uh, if you generate it with OpenSSL, it will be uh, auto-generated. You can, you can set it manually, uh, but it's much easier uh, because it, it, it needs to be unique. Uh, there's the issuer, 
um, which signs your certificate. Uh, there's a few information on the issuer, and the subject is, is actually details uh, about the holder of the certificate. Um, and as you can see, there's a few field. Uh, for example, C is for country, O is the organization, uh, which you can see for both the issuer and the subject as well. And there are uh, other supported fields. Um, here, there's a, a list of them. Uh, there's the country, the state organization, organization unit, and so on. Uh, we are mostly interested in the common name because we are using that, um, or we are actually deriving uh, the uh, username in GitLab uh, from, the, from the common name. And there's also another one, the email address, which we also use for GitLab because we occasionally send out emails uh, and we, we need that um, in, the, in the subject field. So uh, there are different formats, uh, how you can have the, the certificates. Uh, I will now sh show you an example uh, which uses the standard M4. But for example, if you are to um, import your certificate in Firefox, uh, you might need to uh, convert it to PKCS 11 format, um, which is a bit different than the standard BAM. And uh, by the way, PKCS stands for Public Key Cryptography Standard. So it's a standard which defines um, how, how the, the format should look like uh, for the certificate. And um, now I will just... Uh, discuss shortly uh, how you can create a certificate with the YubiKey. Of course, these steps are, are also applicable for, for other devices. Um, if you wanna play with the, with the smart card and, and also useful because you can see the, uh, what are the components and uh, which are required to, to create the certificate. Um, so first I will just, uh, this, this command just creates a private key. The private key will be 2048 bit long. Um, and using that uh, private key, um, this will, the command will generate uh, and self sign a certificate. So here we uh, use the minus key uh, option, uh, providing the, uh, the key which we created in the previous step. And the output of this command is going to be the ca.pem file. And you can see that the, um, the command is now asks for the different fields I, I previously mentioned. So you can enter the country name, the state, uh, the common name, email address, and so on for the, um, for the certificate. And um, you can also check uh, the CA file. Uh, which we have, this is pretty much in the same format, uh, but you can now see that the issuer is random corporation. Um, and because it's a self signed certificate, the subject is also the random corporation. So this is uh, the one we are going to use um, to create and sign the certificate for the wiki. And um, <clears throat> so if you search the internet how to uh, create a, a, a keeper for the YubiKey, uh, you might find uh, different guides uh, because Yubiku, the company be behind YubiKey is in the process of refactoring their tooling and most of the documentation still mentions the, the, the previous tool. I think it was called what, Yubi uh, PIV tool or something like that, uh, but it no longer supports um, um, all the features of the newer YubiKeys. For example, I have a YubiKey 4 and I found some incompatibilities uh, which didn't work out with the previous tool, but they still haven't migrated all the codes to this new tool uh, and the documentation is still not updated. Um, so you might be, uh, need to, need to uh, check it twice if, if you are using using the right tool, but this, this is the new tool and YKMN, and this will create uh, a key. And 9A is actually the name of the slot because the slot, uh, the UBG have different slots which can uh, hold the, the key pair, and 9A is one of them. And we create the, the private key uh, as, as ubikey.pen. And then we create the, the certificate signing request, uh, the CSR, uh, uh, also with the YKMN command, 
uh, we set the, the subject. Uh, here you can see the, the common name and the email address. Uh, we set it there, and the output of this will be the, the ubkey.csr file, um, which we are going to sign uh, with the root CA we created in the first few steps. So here you can see we provide the minus CA, CA PEM, and the CA key with the uh, ca.key file. Uh, we are using OpenSSL to generate a serial um, for this uh, certificate. And the output will be the, the oops, the YubiKey certificate file. Uh, let me just, okay, now we are back. Um, right, and then the, pretty much the last step is to import the certificate uh, to your YubiKey. Uh, we are importing it to the same slot, uh, 9A, and uh, then you can check uh, the status uh, here you can see all the details uh, uh, of the, here's the subject and the issuer, distinguished name, and all the details we provided. The CN for the subject is GitLab user 01, uh, and the email address is already set. And you can see I can, I still, the pin tries left is still three. Um, so for the next steps, um, so currently the, uh, in GitLab, the smart card integration isn't using an adapt server. It now uses a, an internal smart card identity model um, on the, uh, in the database. Uh, but probably most important is the, is the adapt integration uh, because um, most folks wanna use, uh, use it with adapt. And this is going to be the, the, the next step for us to add a, uh, an adapt support. So user no longer uses the, the local DB, uh, but can check the certificate in the adapt server. And the other step is certificate extensions because previously what you've seen is we were just using the, the distinguished name, the subject, uh, the common name and email address on the certificate but there might be other uh, tools, for example, the subject alternative name extension, uh, which can be, which, which provide the finer uh, details to what the username and email could be for the user. Um, so these are the plans and yeah, I can see uh, there's a few questions in the group chat. So can I can be created on first login with smart card? So yes, yeah, so actually um, now, um, if you if, if you try to sign in with a smart card which you haven't used previously, it will automatically create a new user uh, for that login. Um, so a new user will be created, and then it will be saved as a smart card identity. And next time when you will try to log in with that user, uh, that user will be found and logged in again. And the second question: Nginx config made it sound like the client certificates need to be valid. Um, yes, yes, that, that's right. The client certificates need to be valid. Otherwise the Nginx will throw an error. Right, so. Um, so is, is this integration? I think this is my last slide. Uh, <laughs> so feel. I had a yeah, quick go ahead. Uh, is this intended for primarily for like on-premise customers? Because it seems like if you were had it on like GitLab.com, there could be things where someone somehow gets a valid certificate with an email address of someone else or something like that. Like, is the plan to be mostly on-premise customers? Yes, yes, this is only for on-premise customers. Okay. Uh, otherwise, like uh, like uh, every company needs to like import their own CA file uh, right. to GitLab, which we don't really want. So yeah, yeah this this is a, a, a only a, a on premise for on premise customers. It's bringing back. I worked in the DoD back in the day. And it's bringing back memories. 
<laughs> all those smart cards. It was, it was a pain because the support was, you know, iffy on some things, but it looks pretty good right now. I like the, yeah, I like that you did the client certificates first and then you'll move on to the LDAP stuff because that would be a bit, a bit big to do both all at once. Yeah, yeah. That was our first thinking because it just seems so such a huge uh, work and we just split into, I think there are even like three uh, different uh, iterations. And, and this is basically the first one, but uh, now it's shipping also with, with uh, Omnibus support uh, oh, in okay. 11.6 in, in five days. Cool. So when, um, I haven't read the documentation, so is it a, a thing that you have to do in the config file or can you do it in the UI and it'll start up the secondary Nginx? Um, no, uh, you need to do it in the config file. Oh, okay. Yep. Because because Omnibus needs to also configure the Nginx, so yeah. this is why it's not uh, it's not okay. it's not possible uh, with only using the admin admin area. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of other questions. <laughs> sure, we still have 30 minutes. <laughs> Does it work like the, the email address? Is that fairly standard in terms of like you used a format that's widely used across smart cards? Like, will it work with the... Um, yeah, so... I... Uh, go ahead. Um, yeah, so so there's actually two different formats. One is is uh, appending it to the um, to the common name and mm -hmm. also as a separate field. Uh, we actually support both. Oh, okay. But pro probably it will be better when we add the subject alternative name extension uh, because I think there's also option to like um, I, I, that might be even a, 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 a more um, standard solution to define the email address for the user uh, right. with that extension. But now we support both of the format that, that, that is applicable to the subject field. Mm -hmm. Does it support the common access card now, the DOD one? I don't know. I don't remember where the email address was on those. Yeah, I, I don't know. So that was one of the issue I, I couldn't get a hold of a, a real <laughs> smart card. Yeah. So it was really hard to test. I, 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 needed to, I needed to figure out my own how to create a, a certificate and use with, with, a, uh, with, with my wiki. Uh, but actually, this is the one thing I'm hoping, uh, getting back from customers to get feedback on, mm -hmm. the, uh, on, on the feature because, because I wasn't sure what extensions are used. And, uh, and how, so it will be very, very, very helpful to, to get, get back some feedback on, on this feature because I, I can imagine there's like many different ways. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I actually am not sure about the, the DOD one because uh, I, I, I don't have a, a card. I can, I can imagine, I can imagine it's a big requirement for them that they would be one of the groups pushing for it because I just remember like, you know, that's what they were doing with basically everything. If it didn't support smart card, it had to soon. So, but, but it looks like it, it looks like a good work so far. Um, and uh, I like that you're using the, uh, the uh, client certificates because then you, uh, you have that mutual authentication for the encrypted tunnel as well. So it actually, yeah, if I saw it correctly, it actually authenticates to Nginx and to Rails. It verifies it twice. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so first, uh, we actually used to only authenticate in Nginx and like just forward the end result to GitLab Rails. Mm -hmm. uh, but as we figured out, that might not be the most secure solution because one can just forward the header to GitLab Rails itself uh, without Nginx, and that could still authenticate the user, which we don't want. 
So yeah. we added the, the, the verification to, to the rail side as well. Yeah. Anyway, um, if there's no further question, let me just quickly check back the, the Zoom chat. Uh, right, so uh, I'm not seeing any more questions, uh, but if you have, uh, or, or we'll have one, uh, mm -hmm. you can reach us on the G underscore many channel, and uh, feel free to, um, to ask questions anytime regarding the, the smart card authentication. Excellent. Thank you very much for the presentation. Yeah, th thanks everyone attending. <laughs> All right. Yeah. See you. See you then. Yeah. See ya.